the second lecture in module 1 on introduction to computational fluid dynamics. In the previous lecture we had provided with a brief introduction to computational fluid dynamics. We had a look at the historical perspective and we also had a brief look at myriad applications of CFD. Now, in today's lecture we would focus on the basic numerical simulation process and what are the main discretization techniques which are used in CFD and we will also briefly discuss about the outline of the course that for the topics which we are going to cover in this introductory course on computational fluid dynamics. So, let us have a brief recap of previous lecture. We discussed uh, what is meant by computational mechanics and CFD and what is the need for numerical simulation. We also had a brief historical perspective based on the developments of the algorithms and early applications and what is today happening in CFD and research and applications. We also had a look at major applications of CFD. Now, today we will have a brief look at the CFD simulation process and then we will discuss what are topics which are we are going to cover in this course. So, we will start with numerical simulation process as conceptual outline and then we will briefly discuss the discretization techniques which have been used in computational fluid dynamics and then the outline of the course. Now, let us have a look at the numerical simulation process. At numerical simulation for any problem, what are the conceptual steps which are involved which we must address to? So, if the steps involved are that we will have to first obtain an approximation of the problem geometry. The CAD model which might have been made for the production of prototype may not be suitable in its entirety for the CFD analysis and we might have to op make certain approximations to make the geometry amenable for the CFD analysis purposes. So, this is what we mean by approximation of the problem geometry. Then we have to choose the appropriate mathematical model and numerical solution techniques depending on the physics of the problem and the expertise available or the software which are available to us. And then once we have made this choice about the mathematical model and numerical simulation techniques, we have to implement it on a computer and then once the numerical simulation technique has been implemented, we have run our problem, we have got a huge set of data for flow variables that data has to be analyzed to get meaningful physical insight into the problem. So, these are the basic steps which would be involved in any numerical simulation of a physical problem. Now, let us have a look at uh, each one of these uh, in a bit more detail. The first step would, model would be model the geometry of the problem domain and choose appropriate mathematical model. Then choose a suitable discretization method. This would be clearer when we discuss about discretization schemes. We can choose a finite difference, finite volume, finite element method or a meshless scheme. And then depending on the choice of the discretization method, we have to generate a suitable grid which would also depend on the problem geometry and the physics of the problem. And then we have to make a choice of the suitable solution techniques which can solve the system of discrete equations which we have obtained after the application of the discretization method on our continuum problem. And in this step, most of the time we would be using iterative solution methods. So, we also got to set suitable convergence criteria that what would be the what sort of convergence we require, what is the tolerances we can accept and so on. And once we have obtained the solution, prepare the numerical solution for further analysis. Now, let us have a more detailed look at the major steps which we had discussed in the numerical simulation process. The first one is geometric or geometry modeling. And uh, since we are using a computer to solve a problem, we need a computer representation of a physical prototype or problem domain. And uh, for most of engineering problems, please note that it may not be possible or even desirable to include all the geometric details of the system in its geometric model used for CFD analysis. 
And I would like to emphasize here again that we have to have prepared maybe an engineering design cycle, a separate geometric model for CFD analysis compared to what we might use in stress analysis based on the aims of the simulation. And uh, the analyst has to make a careful choice regarding the level of intricate details of the geometric features which are to be incorporated and which ones are to be left out. Because if we make, uh, if we incorporate all the in intricate details, we have to be very careful during grid generation process and the process might, grid generation process might become unduly painful without much gain in the terms of the accuracy of the numerical solution. So let's have a look at a simple example of uh, the numerical simulation for the flow field around an automobile. So suppose you want to design a new car and you want to optimize or reduce the drag on it. What are the features of the outer geometry which we have to incorporate in our geometric model which would be used in CFD analysis. We are interested in finding out the flow field around the vehicle, but then we have to, the outer surface of the vehicle has to be modeled. Now, do we need to provide all the intricate details of uh, the front air intake grills or all the protrusions which we have in our uh, physical model? Is that desirable? Usually not. We will simply ignore many of the finer geometric details which are there in the prototype because incorporation of these finer features would make our grid generation process very difficult. We have to choose very fine grids close to those uh, finer protrusions and uh, that fine grid will only increase the cost of computation without contributing to the accuracy of the velocity and pressure field and the predicted drag which is the aim of our simulation. Next, let us have a look at the mathematical modeling step. We have to choose an appropriate mathematical pro model for the problem and uh, the mathematical model will depend on the objective of the simulation and the physics of the flow problem. For instance, if we want to simulate the flow over an, an automobile or a low speed train, here by low speed train I mean the trains running at uh, less than 400 kilometer per hour. So, in such situations what we see Mach number would be less than 0.3 and we can do away with or we would be happier if we just take what we call incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. We will have detailed look at the incompressible and compressible Navier-Stokes equations in our next module. So, for low speed flows we do not have to uh, consider the compressibility effect. We can solve a simpler model which is the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. On the other hand, if you are dealing with high speed compressible flows, say for instance, we are dealing with hypersonic flows. In such situations, for the initial design purposes, we may simply ignore the viscous effects and we can go with an inviscid model. In fact, that is what is routinely done in the aircraft industry that the initial simulations are based on the Euler's equation and sometimes a simplified version of Euler's equation is what we call full potential equations which are easier to solve compared to let us say the IRS equation or full Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, the choice of the model will also depend on the available computing resources and the level of accuracy desired. For instance, let us consider this a simulation turbulent flow problem. Let us say suppose we are dealing with the flow through a turbine and we want to model that flow for industrial design applications. Should we go for what we call Reynolds average Navier-Stokes simulations which involve modeling of uh, the perturbations in the flow or should we go for more accurate large eddy simulations where modeling is used then only for what we call isotropic small scale areas or should we model all the scales of the flow which is what is there in direct numerical simulation. Now, without going into further details, we will discuss the details of uh, the RANS, LES and DNS in the later modules. Let us just be aware here, the direct numerical simulation for industrial CFD analysis, turbulent flows, let us say in, 
in turbines or even uh, rivers or channels is impossible with present stage of the development in computer science, computer hardware and software. So DNS is simply ruled out and the volume of the data which we would get that would be very, very difficult to handle as well. So DNS is ruled out in such situations. For design cycle what we would rather go for is we will go for less accurate but feasible numerical simulation based on RANS model. Large eddy simulation will again be too expensive and it will be used only maybe for the refinement of the final design which would have been obtained from iterative simulations based on RANS model. So that is why our uh, availability of resources and the aim of the simulation and the level of accuracy which we desire that will also dictate the models which we have to opt for. Next discretization method, for computer simulation we have to convert a continuum mathematical model into a discrete system of algebraic equations because that is what a computer can handle and we have to choose a suitable discretization procedure and there are many different procedures are available. In CFD the most popular ones are finite difference method, the finite element method and the finite volume method. We will have a detailed look at each of these methods in the later modules of the course. Today's lecture also will have briefly touch upon what these three methods mean and how they are used. Which discretization method would be chosen that would depend on the problem geometry. For instance, if you have got fairly simple Cartesian geometry, the easiest method to use would be finite difference method. For complex geometries, easier choice would be to go with an unstructured grid based finite element or finite volume methods. So this one aspect, geometry is one aspect, other is preference of the analyst that the analyst might prefer one particular method over other and uh, this is also dictated by the predominant trend in a particular application area. For example, finite element method is very popular for stress analysis applications, it is not that we cannot use finite difference or finite volume method for stress analysis, finite difference was the one which was used in early days of uh, stress analysis purposes. Similarly, the finite difference method was used initially for modeling and simulation of turbulent flows. So still finite difference method are traditionally very popular compared to finite element method in numerical simulation of turbulent flows. Uh, commercial CFD codes which have to deal with the complicated geometries and they have to satisfy uh, a number of clients from different areas of application, they have a distinct preference for finite volume method because this method provides the flexibility of finite element to, in terms of handling complex geometries. So that is why the preference has been for finite volume method in majority of the CFD codes. The next process which is uh, that depending on the choice of uh, this discretization procedure, we will have to generate a suitable grid to discretize your problem domain and uh, the choice of the grid or mesh would depend on the discretization method which we have chosen. It will also depend on the problem geometry and the physics involved. For instance, if you are dealing with the transonic flows or hypersonic flows over the wing bodies our mesh or the grid should be fine enough to resolve the shock waves which are present away from the solid surfaces. Close to the body we will definitely have much finer grid but even we have to provide finer grids in those areas where shock waves are likely to appear. So the physics of the problem also dictates the design of the grid which we would use in our numerical simulation. And uh, whether we would use structured grid or unstructured grid that will also depend on the choice of discretization scheme. For finite difference method we have to go for a structured grid, there is no other option available. But with finite element and finite volume method we can use either a structured grid or unstructured grid. In case if you have opted for finite element or finite volume methods based on unstructured grids we must take proper care to ensure the proper grading and the quality of the mesh.
Next let us have a look at uh, the numerical solution process. This deals with the solution of our discrete equations. We had applied our discretization method, chosen a suitable grid and on that grid when we apply the discretization method, our continuum problem is transformed into a system of discrete equations. The other ones which ought to be solved and the system of discrete equations could be a system of ordinary differential equations in time if you are dealing with time dependent flows and these would be a system of algebraic equations for steady state problems. Now if you had time dependent problem then we have to apply it and the approximation scheme what we call time integration schemes to convert this ordinary differential equations into a system of algebraic equations at each time step. There are some time integration techniques wherein we may not have to solve a system of algebraic equations that is to say if you are using explicit time integration methods we might be able to find the solution to the problem using a straightforward formula. But with implicit methods we would again get a system of algebraic equations at each time step. So solution of a sparse algebraic system of equations that is that lies at the heart of computational mechanics or CFD simulations. And uh, usually the size of such systems would be very large and it is very difficult to apply what we call direct solution techniques. So, we will go for what we call iterative methods and the choice of the method would again depend on the type of the grid which we have used and the size of system. Now if you have chosen an iterative solver we have to set appropriate convergence criteria. Now this convergence criteria would depend on how much accuracy we require and how efficiently or how easily by investing how much computer time we want to obtain our solution. So that is what will govern the efficacy of the solution process and the tightness of the tolerance would also depend on the floating point precision used for numerical computations. Say for instance you have chosen single precision. Now in that case specifying a tolerance value of 10 to the power minus 10 would be simply meaningless because our floating point a single precision floating point computations can provide us an accuracy of only up to 5 or 6 significant digits. So it does not make any sense to provide a tolerance tighter than 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 4 at the most. Whereas if you are dealing with double precision floating point computations we can have a much tighter tolerance maybe of 10 to the power minus 6 or 10 to the power minus 8 for the iterative solution process. The last step in numerical simulation is what we call post processing. The numerical simulation that gives us the values of uh, flow variables at discrete set of computational nodes and it is uh, very difficult to make out anything from looking at the numerical values at so many points. So what we would like to have as an analyst of the problem, we would like to see the variation of different flow variables with the space and with time and for this purpose we need to perform what we call the post processing of the data which has been generated by a CFD simulation. Similarly for design analysis we might be interested in let us say drag, we might be interested in stresses and heat fluxes. Now these are what we call secondary variables, these must be computed based on the available flow simulation data. Now most of the commercial CFD codes they provide their own post processes which compute the secondary variables and they will provide you a variety of uh, beautiful plots contour plots, line plots and so on which are based on the nodal data obtained from the simulation. Similarly suppose you have written your own CFD code which did not have a post processor. There are commercial post processor or open source software available. You can just tailor your output to the input requirements of those software and obtain a similar type of post processed data as let us say Fluent or Star CD would provide you. Now please remember that these computations of uh, at the post processing step they also involve further approximations because what we have from a CFD simulation is data at certain set of computational nodes and if you want to have the variation of the entire domain we have to perform certain interpolations. We might have to 
perform differentiation of flow variables to obtain fluxes and stresses. So, there would be additional approximations involved in the interpolation of neural data for integration as well as differentiation to obtain the secondary variables and to obtain special distributions for our contour plots. The last step is what we call validation. We also had a brief discussion about validation in the previous lecture. And uh, this is one of the most important steps here that numerical simulation had given us a solution, but does it accurately reflect the physical reality? That we do not know unless and until we have validated it with available experimental data. But there is a catch here that in general we would be performing numerical simulation for a problem for which no experimental data is available. It might be an altogether new design which you have just come up with and you want to refine it further. So, this absolutely no possibility of having an experimental data. Experiment data you will uh, experiments will be performed on the prototype which will be based on what you get after your design analysis is complete and you have come up with your reasonably final representation of the design of your product. So, now what do we do in such situations? So, in such situations what we would do is we will validate the problem based on the experimental data for a similar system or subsystem. For instance, let us say we, uh, uh, we have designed an airplane or a high speed train. Now, for this one way to validate would be come up with this scaled model for forming numerical experiments or numerical simulation on the scaled model, try to perform the experiments in wind tunnel for the scaled prototype and use that experimental data to validate your numerical simulation on the scaled model and then go for the numerical simulation on full prototype. So, that is one way that is uh, normally the most practical way which is adopted in industry for the validation of numerical simulation data. And once we have validated our results, we can perform the simulation confidently for the full scale problem and optimize our design. Next, let us have a brief look at the discretization techniques which are used in CFD and computational mechanics. And we can broadly classify these techniques in two categories. The first one what we call as mesh based methods, which require discretization of a problem domain into a mesh or grid. And the popular examples of finite differences, finite element and finite volume method. This also few other methods notably boundary element method as well, which require a mesh. By a mesh what we mean we will have a set of discrete points, but those discrete points would be interconnected. We also need the connectivity information in application of these methods. The, the points are not arbitrarily distributed in the domain. So, those interconnections that leads to what we call uh, finite elements or se uh, finite volume cells or grid elements. In contrast to mesh based methods, we have also got a category of methods which we call mesh free methods, which primarily use a collection of nodes with no apparent con connectivity. The computational nodes could be arbitrarily distributed in the solution domain. The connectivity in information is not required in the formulation or in discretization process. And some of the popular methods which have been discussed are smooth particle hydrodynamics element free Galerkin method, meshless local petro Galerkin method, lattice Boltzmann method and there are many many such schemes. If you are interested you can just have a look in the literature. You can simply type a Google search of mesh free methods and you will see there are hundreds of variants of different mesh free methods available in literature. But when it comes to CFD, mesh based methods are the most popular. And of these finite volume methods have uh, caught the attention of uh, the commercial developers because its simplicity and ease of application for problems in complex geometries. So, that is why majority of commercial CFD software for instance ANSYS Fluent or Star Series, they are all based on finite volume method. Now, let us have a brief look at the three mesh based methods for instance finite difference, finite element and finite volume method in bit more detail. We will take these methods formally in each, we will dedicate one module each to
to finite difference, finite volume and finite element method later on in this course. Now finite difference method is the oldest method for numerical solution of partial differential equations. It dates back to 1800. It is also the easiest method to formulate for the problems on simple geometries though with recent developments in Emers boundary method have made this method equally capable to solve problems on arbitrary complex geometries where grid still remains for we call simple Cartesian grid but there are techniques available using which we can model our curved geometries to the specified tolerance or accuracy. Now what do we do in finite differences that our solution domain is discretized using a structured grid, usually a Cartesian grid. In some instances we can go for a body fitted grid wherein finite difference discretization is applied to the transformed equations and uh, we use the conservation equation in differential form and what we essentially do is at each grid point in our computational domain replace the partial derivatives by their finite difference approximations which would be defined in terms of the nodal variables at the neighboring points. So this particular step transforms our partial differential equation into an algebraic equation at each computational node. And then we can collect all such algebraic equations for all the grid points and then the resulting system of discrete equations are solved to yield the approximate solution of the problem at all the grid nodes. And once we know the solution to all the grid nodes, we can use the post processing technique to obtain the secondary variables and the distribution throughout the domain. The main disadvantage which used to be earlier before the advent of or the wide uh, their popularity of Emers boundary techniques was that finite difference method are restricted to simple geometries. So please remember that Emers boundary techniques they have removed this restriction and we are no more limited by the complexity of the geometries while if you want to use finite difference method as our preferred discretization technique. Next let us have a look at the beautiful method called finite element method. This is the method which has been credited with the, the revolution in computational mechanics as well as in computational fluid dynamics. And what we do here in finite element method is to divide our problem domain into a set of finite elements. They may be structured or they might be unstructured. And the elements are usually triangles or quadrilaterals in two dimensions or and tetrahedra or hexahedra in three dimensions. In fact, in the beginning triangular elements were the most popular because using them is very easy to generate grids on arbitrarily complex geometries. And that was one of the reasons why majority of the grid generation schemes which were developed for finite elements, they were referred to as triangulation techniques. And the starting point of the method is conservation equation in differential form. From there we transform it, to it into an integral form and thereafter obtain a system of discrete equations. The most popular process here is that we first approximate the unknown variable using an interpolation procedure wherein the nodal values are approximated using a set of known functions or the, the problem variable over the domain or over a particular element that is approximated in terms of the unknown, eight unknown nodal values and a set of known functions. These set of known functions are called interpolation functions, shape functions or trial functions. Now this approximation is substituted in our differential equation which will not be satisfied exactly and will lead to an error. Now this resulting error is termed as residual and we want to minimize this residual in an average sense using a weighted residual procedure. And this particular process of trying to minimize the residual in an average sense using a weighted integral statement leads to a system of discrete equation in terms of unknown nodal values. So we have already got a discrete system, solve it to obtain the solution at the nodes. Now once the values at nodes are available, we know the interpolation functions using them, the solution can be obtained at 
any point in the problem domain. The shape functions can also be used to obtain secondary variables, whether they require differentiation or integration, it really does not matter. So, this finite element method is ideally suited to problems on complex geometries and hence this method was very popular, still very popular in computational solid mechanics. In fact, 99.9% .9 codes for computational solid mechanics are based on finite element method. There is extensive literature available on all the aspects of this method. I would just refer to you a few books like you can refer to the classics by Jinkwitz et al or you can refer to the book by Reddy. There are many, many uh, books available on finite element method. In this particular course, we will just briefly touch upon the finite element method in one of the modules. For details, you can always refer to these books. Next, let us come to the finite volume method, which is one of the most popular methods used in commercial CFD applications. And this method is based on the integral form of conservation equations, not the differential form. And herein, we follow a procedure fairly similar to what is used in finite elements, that is divide the problem domain into set of non-overlapping control volumes. So, integral form of conservation equations are defined over an arbitrarily complex problem domain. So, same integral equations also hold good for, they will hold in each of these finite volumes. So, that is the basis of uh, this finite volume method. So, we can apply our conservation equation over each of these finite volumes and all that we do is the integrals which would occur in the conservation equations, they are evaluated using function values at computational nodes which are yet unknown, these values are unknown, but in terms of these unknown values we will approximate the integrals, they are volume integrals or surface integrals, usually computational nodes as are taken as the centroids and this process of approximation involves certain interpolation formula and integral formula to obtain the value of variables at the surfaces of the CVs. We will look at the details of these process when we come to finite volume method even on the later modules of the course. Now, finite volume method can accommodate any type of grid and hence it is naturally suited for complex geometries and it has immensely benefited from developments in finite element method, specifically the developments on structured grid generation techniques. Now, let us have a look at the outline of the course, what we are going to cover in this particular introductory course. Now, remember computational fluid dynamics has become an essential tool in analysis and design of thermal and fluid flow problems. So, whether you are going to take up a career in industry or in academia, you would use these tools in design as well as in research work. Now, even if you are using a commercial CFD code, the correct use of the CFD requires a thorough understanding of the underlying physics. You must know your fluid dynamics. You must know what are the things involved in mathematical modeling and you should also be aware at least and you should know the numerical techniques which are involved in numerical simulation process. As a user, you must also be fully aware of the properties and limitations of the numerical techniques which are being employed in CFD analysis. And this particular course has been designed to fulfill these objectives. So, we will familiarize you, you with thoroughly with the mathematical modeling of physical problem and you would also become aware of the properties and limitations of each numerical technique which we use in a numerical simulation process. So, to summarize this objective, to provide a vigorous introduction to mathematical modeling of the fluid flow, so that you become comfortable with the physics, spatial and temporal discretization techniques for numerical simulation, algebraic equation solvers and turbulence modeling techniques, which are required for modeling and simulation of turbulent flows, which are ubiquitous in practical applications. And uh, this rigorous introduction should help the reader to develop her or his own CFD code and or make informed and appropriate choices while using a commercial CFD code for numerical simulation of a flow problem. Otherwise, it will be worthwhile to rephrase a code which was coined in finite element analysis that commercial finite element codes, they make 
a good engineer outstanding and a bad engineer outright dangerous. The same thing applies to the CFD codes as well. So, unless you are the analyst is thoroughly familiar with the physics and the mathematics which is involved in this numerical simulation, they might not make correct or appropriate use of the CFD techniques which are very powerful. So, these powerful tools must be applied with full understanding and that is the primary aim of this course. Limitations, please remember this is an introductory course. So, we may not be able to provide a detailed coverage of each description scheme or each topic, but nevertheless we would refer you to the appropriate references which will help you out. Now, let us have a look at a brief look at the modules or the course description. We will first start in the next module, we will take up mathematical modeling. Whatever mathematics we require for this course, we will provide a brief overview of that of the notation, mathematical notation, few mathematical theorems and uh, the conservation principles and how do we use those conservation principles to obtain the mathematical model for a flow problem. So, we are going to discuss that in detail. Then we will have a look at finite difference method in module 3, solution of algebraic equations in module 4, time integration techniques in fifth module. Then we will proceed to finite volume method, finite element method, then to Navier Stokes equations and numerical simulation of turbulent flows and end we would briefly discuss the grid generation and the aspects of real life CFD analysis. Now, let us have a bit more detailed look at each of these modules. In mathematical modeling, we will discuss conservation laws. We will also discuss uh, the notation which is commonly used in CFD literature. And then we will take up governing equations of fluid flow starting from ma mass conservation, momentum, an energy equation and obtain the corresponding integral as well as differential form of the physical laws. Then we will also come up with mathematical classifications. We will look at what are the boundary conditions which we need to model our flow problem. Then we will take the simplest uh, discretization technique called finite differences and we will have a detailed look at this method. What is the basic methodology? What? How do we approximate first order derivatives, second order derivatives? and the applications of our difference method to scale a transfer problem. And we will also look at the computer implementation aspects of finite differences. Now, this computer implementation aspect would be detailed enough for you to help you to apply or write a code based not only on finite difference, but also on finite volume and finite element method later on. Once we have uh, covered one discretization scheme, we have obtained a discrete system. If it is an algebraic system, we would like to solve it. So, the fourth module will discuss some of the schemes, solution method for nonlinear systems, then we will discuss direct and basic iterative methods for linear systems, which are used in CFD. We will also look at the family of methods which we call accelerated iterative methods, and they are the ones which are most commonly used in practical CFD analysis. Next, we will have a brief look at few popular time integration scheme for unsteady problems. We will have a look at two level and multi level methods for first order initial value problems. We will look at predictor corrector and runga kutta methods and we will discuss the application of these methods to unsteady transport problems. And thereafter we move on to finite volume method. How do we approximate the integrals involved in finite volume technique? What are the interpolation schemes involved? And then we will discuss how do we apply the finite volume technique to scalar transport problems. Then we would move on to finite element method, a very brief introduction to finite element. We will have a look at two sets of formulation that is weighted residual formulation which is the most popular one and a variational formulation of the method. Then we will also discuss briefly the finite element shape functions and numerical integration for both two dimensions and three dimensional applications. And then we would apply finite element method to scalar transport problem. So, these discussions should enable you to make use of finite element method to solve time dependent heat conduction equations and extend it further for solution of flow problems. Once we have learnt our discretization techniques, techniques for the solution of uh, algebraic systems and techniques for solving 
time dependent problems in our previous modules. Then we would attempt, this is the heart of the CFD, we want to solve Navier-Stokes equations for this fl fluid flow. So how do we apply these techniques for solution of Navier-Stokes equation that forms the objective of module 8. We will discuss the features of Navier-Stokes equations which differentiates us from scalar equations and we will discuss both the explicit and implicit time integration techniques. We will discuss the popular implicit pressure correction methods and friction step methods. We will then move on to numerical simulation of turbulent flows and uh, we will very briefly discuss what are basic features of turbulence and what are numerical simulation techniques which are used for turbulent flows. In particular, we will have a look at Rand's turbulence model. We will also touch upon the large eddy simulation. And in the last module, we will briefly touch upon the grid generation. We will discuss the definition and classification of grids, grid generation process, both structured and unstructured grid generation. And thereafter, we will have a look at few very important practical aspects which you must keep in mind as a CFD analyst relevant to uh, or related to verification and validation process and which are the methods which are used for complex geometries and most importantly in the end we will cover or discuss the parallel implementation which is now being routinely used in CFD analysis. Now I would like to point out a few things. First the legal disclaimer, though we have made every effort to provide an accurate description of all the topics, the course coordinator shall not be liable for any loss or damages arising from any inadvertent error in these lectures and related course material. So the students are strongly advised to double check the equations of formula themselves either by following the derivation steps outlined in the lectures or referring to the recommended books or literature before using them or using each formula in their own computer course. Now a few references of suggested books. They are my preferences. There are many very good books available on computational fluid dynamics. Here I have provided a list of the ones which I have uh, referred or which I like. The first one is Anderson JD. This listing is uh, not in the order of any priority. It is alphabetical listing from the author name. Anderson's book, Computational Fluid Dynamics, The Basics with Applications. This is one of the most fascinating introductory books on finite difference method in this application in flow problems. The tilt is towards the aerospace applications. Then book by Chung on computational fluid dynamics. It is in fact a compendium I would say. It's one of the most comprehensive books available on CFD. So this is, it is not an introductory text. Anderson's book is an introductory text. But the book by Chung can help you out with any technique which we discuss or which have, had been developed till 2010. Uh, 8th introductory textbook is by Professor Anil Date, published by Cambridge University Press. Then similarly, Computational Methods for Fluid Dynamics by Fersiger and Perix, also a very fantastic introductory text. In addition, this book provides you the references of, there are many pertinent references for complex geometries and turbulence modeling as well. If you are interested in finite element method, Reddy's book could be one of them and specifically for fluid applications it's uh, the book by Reddy and Gartling is a very good reference. You can also look at the book by Professor Sengupta, Fundamentals of Computational Fluid Dynamics. <coughs> Again the tilt is towards the aerospace application in this book. Verstegen and Malalasekaraj book, this is a very nice introduction for those who are interested in finite volume method. Indian reprint is available of this book. And uh, similarly for finite element method, you can have a look at these two classic sets of Jinkwitz et al. Jinkwitz, Taylor and Nithyarasu, which is finite element method for fluid dynamics. And its basics can be covered in eight other volume, which has been uh, referred next. So these are few popular textbooks which I have used and I would recommend you can also have a look at these ones. So this way we are going to put a, a stop to our basic introductions and in the next module we will start off with the very first step of the CFD simulation that is mathematical modeling.